What if the future of cars no longer depended on fuel, charging stations, or even the electric grid itself? What if the next revolution in transportation was already here but the country that birthed it hesitated, while another nation leapt forward without fear? This is the story of how China officially approved the mass production of Maxwell Chikambutso's self-powered electric vehicle before the United States, and why this decision could change the balance of global power forever. Maxwell Chikambutso, the Zimbabwean inventor who has stunned the world with his radical breakthroughs in clean energy, created something that seemed impossible, an electric vehicle that powers itself. This car doesn't need charging. It doesn't rely on fuel. It doesn't stop for power. It simply generates its own energy continuously, allowing it to drive endlessly without worrying about range or infrastructure. For years, skeptics in the West dismissed Maxwell's claims, calling them unproven or even pseudoscience. Yet in Africa, his prototypes demonstrated extraordinary results, showing vehicles running indefinitely without recharging. The world took notice, but while the US and Europe stalled in endless debates and regulatory red tape, China quietly moved in. China, already the world's largest electric vehicle market, saw an opportunity to leap beyond Tesla, BYD, and every competitor in one decisive move. When news leaked that China had given official approval to mass-produce Maxwell's self-powered EV, shockwaves rippled through global industries. The question was no longer, is this real? The question became, what happens now that China has it first? To understand why this is such a big deal, we need to look at how EV adoption has worked until now. Electric vehicles today depend on massive charging networks, expensive battery packs, and constant innovations to improve range. Tesla built superchargers across continents. Governments poured billions into charging infrastructure. Battery makers scrambled to reduce costs, increase density, and extend lifespans. Yet all of this was built on one assumption, that cars will always need to plug in. Maxwell shattered that assumption. His design eliminates the charging station entirely. It uses a breakthrough system of energy harvesting and conversion that keeps the car self-sustaining. Imagine an EV that drives across an entire country without ever stopping to charge. Imagine fleets of buses, trucks, and taxis that operate around the clock without downtime. Imagine governments no longer forced to spend billions on charging networks. The implications are staggering. And China understood this faster than anyone else. Chinese regulators fast-tracked Maxwell's technology through approval channels, a move that surprised even seasoned industry analysts. Usually, car technology in China undergoes years of testing, certification, and partnership negotiations. But this time, approval came unusually fast. Why? Because China sees energy independence and global EV dominance as matters of national strategy. For years, the US led innovation in tech and cars. But today, China is catching up rapidly, investing heavily in everything from batteries to AI-powered vehicles. By adopting Maxwell's self-powered EV, China leapfrogs the competition. No Tesla, no General Motors, no European automaker has anything close to this technology on the market. The US had its chance. Reports indicate Maxwell and his team approached American investors and institutions multiple times. But red tape, skepticism, and corporate protectionism stalled progress. Regulators demanded years of testing, patent battles dragged on, and entrenched oil and energy lobbies pushed back hard. Meanwhile, China simply said yes. The result is a global game changer. Mass production in China means millions of self-powered EVs could soon hit the market. This isn't just about cars. This is about control of the future energy economy. Think about it. Whoever controls the self-powered EV controls the next trillion-dollar industry. Oil demand would plummet if every vehicle powered itself. Electric utilities would lose billions in charging infrastructure investments. Battery giants would face collapse. But nations that adopt this technology would thrive, with energy costs dropping dramatically and transportation becoming nearly free. China knows this. That's why they moved first. Factories in key Chinese provinces have reportedly begun preparing assembly lines for self-powered EVs, using partnerships with domestic automakers. Early models are expected to roll out in limited numbers to test markets in major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. If successful, global exports will follow rapidly. Now imagine how this looks to the US. For decades, America has seen itself as the hub of innovation. But in this case, 
an African inventor's breakthrough was ignored at home and embraced abroad. This is more than just a missed opportunity. It is a direct threat to American dominance in both technology and energy. China not only gains the prestige of being first, but it also controls manufacturing, distribution, and eventual pricing of this revolutionary product. Think about how Tesla became a household name by leading the EV market. Now imagine China becoming the face of the self-powered EV era, while American companies scramble to catch up. That's exactly what is happening right now. But let's step back for a moment and ask, how does Maxwell's car actually work? While full details remain closely guarded, what we know is that the system relies on advanced RF, radio frequency, energy conversion, magnetic fields, and highly efficient power management systems. In simple terms, the car generates usable electricity from its own systems continuously, bypassing the need for external charging. This is not perpetual motion in the old discredited sense. It's an engineering breakthrough in energy capture and conversion that achieves what traditional EVs cannot. Engineers who have seen the prototypes describe them as unlike anything else in the industry. The car operates silently, efficiently, and without producing harmful emissions. For consumers, this means unlimited range. For governments, this means independence from fossil fuels. For automakers, this means the biggest disruption since the invention of the internal combustion engine. So when China approved mass production, it wasn't just approving a new car. It was approving a new era. And the US missed its chance to lead. Why didn't America act sooner? Part of the reason is politics. Big oil companies, energy corporations, and even some automakers had no interest in fast-tracking something that could destroy their business models overnight. Every year, trillions of dollars flow through industries that depend on fuel, electricity, and battery sales. A car that eliminates all of that is a direct threat. And in Washington, threats to big industries rarely move quickly through regulatory systems. Another reason is skepticism. American institutions often demand long trials and years of validation before allowing mass adoption of radical technologies. That caution sometimes protects consumers. But in this case, it handed the advantage to China. China thrives on moving fast and scaling quickly. Even if there are risks or flaws, they are willing to experiment on a massive scale. And that willingness just gave them control of the future of cars. Let's be clear, this isn't just about bragging rights. This is about economic warfare. If China floods global markets with self-powered EVs, every other automaker faces collapse. Tesla's advantage disappears. Legacy automaker like Ford, GM, Toyota, and Volkswagen face obsolescence. Even energy giants like Exxon, Shell, and Chevron face extinction. Because the foundation of their business, fuel and energy dependence vanishes. Imagine a world where no one pays for gas. Imagine a world where no one plugs in to charge. Imagine a world where cars never stop running, buses never sit idle, and trucks deliver goods without energy costs. That world is coming, and China just became its architect. For Maxwell, this is both a triumph and a bitter irony. His invention is finally being recognized, but not by the countries that doubted him. Instead, it is being embraced by a nation that sees technology as a tool for global dominance. And while Africa may one day benefit from his invention, the immediate economic power now lies in Beijing. Some might say it doesn't matter who produces it, as long as humanity benefits. But geopolitics tells a different story. When one nation controls supply, it controls the future. If the US wants access to self-powered EVs, it may have to import them from China, a country it already competes with fiercely. This would be like America depending on China for oil in the 20th century. It's unthinkable, but it could happen. The real tragedy is that the US had the chance to lead. Maxwell was willing to collaborate, but his ideas were dismissed. Now, those same ideas are reshaping the future, but under another flag. The road ahead will not be simple. There will be challenges in scaling production, ensuring safety, and adapting infrastructure. There will be battles over intellectual property, patents, and global trade. There will be propaganda wars as nations argue over who truly owns the technology. But none of that changes the fact that the future of cars has already shifted. We are no longer talking about EVs that need charging. We are talking about EVs that never stop. And China will be the first to put them on the road in mass numbers. The US can still catch up, 
but it will take political will, massive investment, and the humility to admit that it ignored one of the greatest inventions of our time. For now, the world watches as Chinese factories prepare to unleash the first fleets of self-powered EVs. And every automaker, oil company, and government knows that. Nothing will ever be the same again. This is not just the next step in transportation. This is the beginning of the end for the old energy order. Maxwell Chikambutso built the car of the future. China approved it. And the rest of the world is now racing to catch up.